What a crazy chapter! Two major twists just changed everything in MHA, including the tragic fate of Deku after All for One's return, and the sudden appearance of more heroes on the battlefield thanks to the help of a villain. Seriously, you won't believe these twists, so let's get into it. You guys know how this works. If you enjoy my MHA content and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like and comment right now for that YouTube algorithm. And if you're not subscribed already, please do me a huge favor and subscribe, it helps me out a lot. In the last chapter, Deku was able to witness the moment in which Tenko Shimura's quirk first activated through Tenko slash Shigaraki's own memories. In the memory, Deku saw Tenko accidentally kill his dog Monchan, but then, when Tenko was supposed to kill his sister Hana, Deku intervened by grabbing hold of Tenku's hands with his own. Because this is a world where memories materialize, Deku believed that by changing what happens in the memory, he could awaken Tenko within Shigaraki. This was the pivotal moment in Tenko's life. After he accidentally killed his family, no one wanted to help him, and All For One swooped in and took control of his life and turned him into Tomura Shigaraki. But now, as Deku refuses to let go of Tenko, even as his own arms disintegrate from decay, Little Tenko calms down and stops being aggressive. Even though Deku succeeds in his mission to wake Tenko up, at least to an extent, this has a very serious, unintended consequence. Shigaraki's biggest strength has always been his overwhelming hatred and unconquerable willpower, which were of course the very things that allowed him to resist control by All For One's vestige and to reclaim his own body after All For One tried to control it. But, now that Shigaraki is not as confident as he once was, now that Tenko is seemingly awakening within him, his control over All For One's vestige begins to weaken. Suddenly, both Deku and Shigaraki begin to see All For One's memories. Memories of All For One talking to Tenko's father. And in that moment, Shigaraki begins to realize that All For One has been manipulating everything about his life all along. All For One had been manipulating Shigaraki's father. He had been manipulating Tenko since childhood, and in the end, as All For One says, not once in his pitiful life have any of Shigaraki's choices actually been his own. This realization crushes Shigaraki, and it creates an opening for All For One's vestige to regain control of Shigaraki's body once again. Just when we thought that All For One was finally defeated and that the final villain would be Tomura, All For One returns from the dead, yet again. The latest chapter starts off with All For One confirming what just happened. Deku and the One for All Vestiges realized during the IRL fight between Deku and Shigaraki that they can't beat Shigaraki in a direct physical confrontation because Shigaraki is just too powerful and his instant regeneration is too OP. The focus then became trying to take Shigaraki down from the inside. They forced the vestiges of the former One for All users inside Shigaraki and then they attacked him psychologically in an attempt to awaken Tenko Shimura and weaken the personality known as Tomura Shigaraki. They believed that this was the only way to defeat Shigaraki, to break him down mentally, and they basically succeeded. However, that is the exact thing that allowed the vestige of All for One to regain control of his vessel's body. Shigaraki's incredible willpower had been keeping All for One's vestige at bay. But now that his willpower has collapsed due to all the confusion about Tenko and his childhood, All For One re-emerges and reasserts his control. In fact, things might be even worse than they first appeared. Because in the world of Shigaraki's imagination, we see Shigaraki's body disintegrating into nothing as All For One's body takes form yet again. The implication here is that Shigaraki's consciousness is completely collapsing after he realized that his entire life was basically scripted and manipulated by All For One. And this is in turn allowing All For One to take complete and permanent control of Shigaraki's overpowered body. Now, All For One failed to steal One For All twice before. The first time against Daigoro Banjo and the second time against N. And the reason why he failed is because he didn't have the unbreakable willpower and the intense hatred that Shigaraki possessed. So when All Might emerged on the scene and began to get stronger, all For One got to work on yet another secret master plan. See, I always assumed that All For One discovered the Shimura family sometime after Little Tenko was born, and I assumed that his manipulation of Tenko began when he was about 5 years old and still quirkless. But it's actually so much worse than that. All For One met Tenko's father and Nana's son, Kotaro Shimura, before Tenko was even born. At first, the villain considered making Hana his vessel, but she was already too old at the time, so it was actually All For One who convinced Kotaro to have a second child in the first place, just so All For One could eventually groom him from his very birth. All For One is 
quite literally the reason why Tenko Shimura, aka Tomura Shigaraki, exists in the first place. That is so freaking dark and so freaking crazy. Once Tenko was born, All For One kept in touch with the family, and at some point when Tenko was still a baby, All For One actually stole his original quirk. This is why Tenko's quirk never manifested before he turned 5. His quirk was stolen by All For One when he was just a baby. Now, I always assumed that he was just quirkless, and then All For One placed decay inside of him against his will, but it seems that he did have a quirk, but it was stolen. So now I'm wondering what that original quirk could have been, and whether it's actually a quirk that we've seen before, you know, like another quirk that we know has been associated with All For One, such as, for example, Naval Laser. Anyway, the quirk decay was apparently artificially created by Ujiko. Ujiko copied a quirk that seems very similar to Overhaul, and which has the ability to both disintegrate and reconstruct things. But Ujiko somehow removed the reconstruction part, and he created decay, a quirk that can only destroy. I'm not sure if Ujiko literally copied Overhaul itself or just a very similar quirk, but basically, him and All For One wanted Shigaraki to just be an angel of destruction, so they modified the quirk so that it could only destroy. We then see that moment where All For One is walking Little Tenko home on the day that Decay manifested. All For One had assumed the appearance of a harmless looking old man, but while he was walking Tenko home and holding his hand, he secretly transferred Decay into him. And so when Decay suddenly manifested, the outcome was exactly what All For One had planned. Tenko accidentally killed his entire family because he couldn't control the quirk, he was then all alone in the world, and he was the perfect victim for All For One's grooming and manipulation. At that moment, as he witnesses his life flashing before his eyes, Shigaraki inside the memory world seems to disintegrate into nothingness as All For One proclaims that he has annihilated Tomura's mind. All For One had always been planning to play this card in order to secure control of the vessel, he had always planned to destroy Shigaraki's mind, but he had originally planned to play that card after Shigaraki used his overwhelming hatred and willpower to steal one for all. But All For One believes that he can still work with this situation, and as he screams at Tomura to disappear, we see Deku and Shigaraki's bodies returning to the real world. The outside world where they were having that epic physical clash before the fight moved inside of Shigaraki's head. Now seemingly in full control of Shigaraki's body, All For One says that for some reason Yoichi is no longer there. He also says that his midterm plan is no longer feasible. All For One then seems to hear something, and he believes that there is still some sort of echo of Shigaraki left. He then simply grows a hand over his own mouth, kind of like Shigaraki used to have in his old hero costume, and he simply says, SILENCE! Now, this is a hint that Shigaraki slash Tenko is still in there somewhere, just completely broken, I guess, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. Now, while All For One inside of Shigaraki's body seems to have full control of his new vessel, he acknowledges that the physical damage he sustained in the memory world has had real consequences for his physical body. If you'll recall, we did get a warning that this might be the case a few chapters ago. That damage in the memory world would also have consequences in the physical world. And as a result of this damage that he has suffered, All For One feels that his perfect vessel that he had been cultivating for decades is now ruined. Tomura's personality is now seemingly broken and gone forever, but his physical body is no longer what All For One had envisioned. And on top of that, he can no longer sense his younger brother, Yoichi. Now, I'm not sure what exactly this Yoichi part means. Is All For One saying that he can't sense Yoichi inside of Deku because Yoichi left Deku to enter Shigaraki? Or is he saying that he can't sense Yoichi inside of Shigaraki because maybe he secretly went back to Deku before Deku was ejected from the memory world? If Yoichi went back to Deku, then at least we know that Deku will still have access to One For All. But since Deku hasn't used any quirk powers since he returned to the outside world, we just don't know right now. According to All For One, the quirk decay has now disappeared from Shigaraki's body and so has the rage and hatred that Shigaraki had felt. So apparently, Shigaraki's quirk and his entire persona have disappeared, and this vessel now belongs exclusively to All For One. This sounds a little too good to be true for All For One, and I wonder if maybe Shigaraki is still in there, or maybe he even left some part of him inside of Deku. We'll have to wait and find out. As All For One declares that it is time for him to achieve his final goal of conquering the entire world, Deku says that he will never let that happen. But Deku then feels a sharp, sudden pain. We see that Shigaraki's body isn't the only one that has suffered real physical consequences as a result of what happened inside the memory world. Deku, who had lost both of his arms after grabbing hold of Shigaraki while he was using Takei, has now lost both of his arms 
in real life. We see a severely injured Deku lying on the ground, his eyes blank and his arms disintegrated at the forearms. But even with this crippling setback, Deku refuses to give up. All for One says that people can become stronger when they lose something, but Deku has always had nothing. He started out quirkless, and now he is armless and useless. I mean, just look at where Deku's heroics have gotten him. He is severely injured, he is broken, and he is alone. Except he is not alone, because in the very next moment we see multiple Class 1A students suddenly appearing on the battlefield and attacking All For One. First up is Sero, who wraps All For One up with his tape. All For One mocks Sero, saying that he didn't even feel him approach because the danger he poses to the villain is so minuscule in comparison to someone like Deku. But Sero isn't bothered by this, and he wants Deku to know that he is not alone. His friends are there to back him up and support him. As a surprise Deku looks on, Ojiro and Sato also appear and attack the villain at the same time. Deku is happy to see that his classmates are safe, and then the very last page of the chapter shows Aizawa stepping onto the battlefield through Kurogiri's warp gate. Aizawa apologizes for being a little late, and that is the massive twist that changes everything and throws the whole story through another massive loop. This scene implies that Kurogiri has potentially reverted back to Oboroshirakumo, or at the very least, the heroes were able to convince him to turn against All for One and work together with them. The heroes being able to use Warp Gate obviously changes everything, because it allows them to move more people on and off the battlefield very easily. And Warp Gate can even bring Eri back into play. A few chapters ago, it was established that she was too far away to reach the battlefield and help Deku with her quirk rewind. But that all goes out the window if the heroes have the ability to use Warp Gate. Eri's rewind might yet play a role after all. But here's what I'm wondering. Can All For One still use the quirks of the former One For All users like Shigaraki was able to after they entered his body, or did All For One lose this ability? The fact that Sero was able to sneak up on him certainly suggests that maybe his danger sense is not working. So did all the vestiges maybe go back to Deku? Are they still inside Shigaraki's body? And what will happen to them and their quirks now? Also, why did the quirk decay seemingly disappear from Shigaraki's body? Was it somehow transferred into Deku before Deku got ejected from the memory world? If so, could Deku somehow unlock the full power of that quirk? Like, could he somehow awaken the reconstruction aspect of that quirk that All For One and Ujiko removed before giving it to Tenko? And could that allow Deku to grow his arms back and then fight back against the villain's use of super regeneration? And what happened to Yoichi? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Personally, I think this chapter was absolutely crazy. I can't believe what Hori did to Deku here but I think that the other students and heroes showing up at the end was already foreshadowed a long time ago. After the Vigilante Deku arc, Horikoshi told us that this is no longer the story of how Deku became the greatest hero. This is now the story of how all the Class 1A students all became the greatest heroes together. So of course, the final battle would feature teamwork. I still think that Deku will somehow be able to recover and become the star of the show yet again, but whatever happens, I know that teamwork will play a huge part in all of this. Do you guys agree? Let me know. If you want to watch another epic MHA video right now, check out my video on the top 13 strongest multiple quirk users in the entire series. Link on screen and in the description. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like right now. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do me a huge favor and subscribe. It helps me out a lot.